Hey, in this video, we are going to talk about why are Phineas and verbs so intelligent. So before starting this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. Since its debut, the antics of Phineas and Ferb have caught the imagination of millions of viewers. And since its debut, fans of the show have offered their own hot takes and opinions regarding the storyline and characters. Here are a few interesting fan theories that have been shared by viewers. Number 10. Why Doofenshmirtz is enemy? Heinz Doofenshmirtz is, simply put, not very evil. He's actually kind to children, a loving father, and just generally nice. However, he still has aspirations of conquering. Albeit somewhat less grand than your average villain, the tri-state area is not quite the size of the world. And his inventions are just as often useless, as they are horrifying. He also has a tragic backstory that would make anyone else a sociopath at best, and his brother, though a very popular politician, is actually more evil than he is, as shown by the citywide apathy towards giving children dangerous supplies and materials. Dr. Doofenshmirtz's first scheme shown was to cover the entire eastern seaboard in tinfoil. How would he accomplish this, you ask? Through a giant magnet? He had created a magnet powerful enough to cover the eastern seaboard in tinfoil from a great distance away and targeted enough that it didn't affect every other piece of metal in the world. Number 9. Why Perry lives with Phineas and Ferb. As seen in the movie, he does scan Phineas and Ferb's inventions. Also, when Phineas say his iconic line, Ferb, I know what we're gonna do today. In the episode in which Perry dreams that they found out his secret identity, a SWAT team comes and takes Phineas and Ferb, probably to lock them up in an effort to prevent them from becoming a threat. This second mission goes to other people's pets like Isabella's Chihuahua. Isabella is a potential threat because she's shown many times to be highly skilled in combat, and she's the leader of the Fireside Girls, which are very militaristic, skilled, and organized. Number 8. How Phineas and Ferb can afford to build their inventions. In Phineas and Ferb, it's a well-known feature of the show that the things Phineas and Ferb create are insane for a kid to make. In real life, the things they make would require a lot of technical know-how, and in some cases, outright breaking the laws of physics. However, let's keep some suspension of disbelief. Maybe these kids know things that the leading scientists of today don't. The real question is, how do they get the money for it? Roller coasters, rockets, and time machine parts cost money, don't they? NASA struggles to stay competitive in space with millions to billions of dollars, and although Phineas and Ferb are often shown dealing with contracts and legal paperwork, we never see money exchange hands. Who is paying for their builds? Number 7. Doofenshmirtz is Phineas's real dead. So a few years ago, a fan theory emerged that Phineas of Phineas and Ferb is Doofenshmirtz's biological son. The main evidence for this was that Phineas' head shape looks a lot like Doof's. Phineas has a bit of the mad inventor about him. He's always the one who chooses some crazy build as the thing he and Ferb are going to do today and that Linda and Doof dated when they were young, before Linda became a one-hit wonder pop star. This gained some traction before people pointed out the one very big hole in it, Candace. Not only does she not look anything like Doofenshmirtz, but she meets him in one episode and doesn't recognize him at all. Surely he couldn't be her father, so therefore he couldn't be Phineas either, right? Number 6. Why Phineas and Ferb are so smart. It's uncanny how often Doofenshmirtz and Aders hit something in Phineas and Ferb's backyard. So here's the theory. When they were younger, Phineas and Ferb were hit with one of Doofenshmirtz's innators while playing in the backyard. The innators significantly increased Phineas and Ferb's intelligence, making them capable of inventing and building the types of things that they do. Number 5. Dr. Doofenshmirtz is running an insurance scam. In every single Phineas and Ferb episode, Perry foils Doofenshmirtz's plans and destroys his innator, usually also damaging his tower in the process. Something like that should be catastrophic for Doof, but 24 to 48 hours later, he's got a brand new machine set up. It's mentioned that his wife gives him alimony, sure, but that's nowhere near enough to cover his rent, food, and high-tech machines, and she cuts him off partway through the show. Doof is running a business, allowing him access to insurance. Major Monogram even mentions that Odusie has an insurance plan for their hover jets at one point, so we know that there's some kind of insurance plan available for secret organizations and mad scientists. Number 4. The entire family is in on it. Mrs. Flynn. She was originally married to Candace's father. Major Monogram. The marriage broke up because of her infidelity with Dr. Doofenshmirtz, resulting in Phineas Flynn. Mrs. Flynn then married Ferb's father. Phineas Flynn. Son of Mrs. Flynn and Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Stepbrother of Ferb Flynn. Half-brother to Candace Flynn. Very smart, although did not know how to apply his talents until this stepbrother Ferb joined the family and built Phineas' ideas. Ferb Flynn. Son of Mr. Flynn, mother unknown. Really talented in engineering and construction, started building difficult items once he met Phineas, his stepbrother. 
Number 3. Everyone knows about Phineas and Ferb. Everything but doesn't confirm it to Candace, as it would cut off the writings she makes about her daughter. While she may not actively be a part of the boys' adventures or only sees a small scale that's plausible for two young boys to accomplish, such as the Treehouse episode, her own husband and other family members have been active parts of the boys' adventures, such as the Father's Day episode. Not to mention times the entire town has been a part of whatever the boys have done. In a couple episodes, there's subtle remarks of their mother writing down her daughter's shenanigans and possibly using them for comedy or to write a book about dealing with teens. Number 2. All of the kids are in a psychiatric facility. The events taking place in the show are all the delusions of a group of kids in a children's psychiatric facility. That's why the parents never see anything and why everything is so easy to do in that world. In reality, Phineas and Ferb's inventions are made of toys. The reason nobody ever gets hurt on anything is because, since they're locked up, the toys their inventions are made from are childproof to prevent their use as a weapon. The reason they disappear at the end of every day around the same time is because they have scheduled time to play with them. The reason the parents go away so often during the episodes is because, while they visit as often as possible, they aren't allowed to be with their children all day. The kids' minds make the grocery excuse to explain why the adults are so often absent. Number 1. Candace is stuck in a time loop. Candace is actually stuck in a time loop of reliving the same day that the boys built the roller coaster, with minor changes to hinder her from breaking out. That's why the same plot structure occurs every episode, and why she's the only one that notices it. So this is the end of this interesting video. Do you like it? Openly submit your feedback in our comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel.